Well, good afternoon everybody. Um, I said I'd make a video about brakes a while ago. So this is going to be the first of a few videos on brakes because, uh, well, today I'll just explain the basics and um, then I'm actually going to show you how to completely redo a braking system, well, disc brake, hydraulic disc brakes anyway. So this one, this video is going to be talking about drum brakes versus disc brakes. Let me show you the two different kinds first. Okay, let's take a look at these bikes that we have here. This little scooter over here, and the front has a, as you can see, disc brakes. Very easy to tell disc brakes from drum brakes because discs actually have a steel or a metal disc. That's why they're called disc brakes, obviously. Um, this is what's called a caliper. And then you'll see there's usually a hydraulic line that runs all the way from your master cylinder which well in this case it's underneath the plastic so that's not a good example I'll show you on my other bigger bikes as you can see we have a rear disc brake on this crosser see caliper disc um, and of course oh yes I suppose I could show you the master cylinder for that is over here okay it's a very small silly one um, on my CB the rear one here is a disc as well. This is a ventilated disc brake. The reason being uh, this allows it to cool down quicker. If you are uh, obviously braking a lot, this will get very hot and these little holes is going will help the heat dissipate. Here is the caliper. Okay, if we take a look at the front of these bikes. This over here is the master cylinder. Here it is on the crosser. Okay, you have a little window to tell how you know the level of your brake fluid which is very important and I'll explain that to you later basically what happens is when you are braking it provides a pumping action which goes all the way down this uh, very thick hydraulic brake line sorry just to move things here and all the way down to the caliper then what happens is the caliper has two cylinders inside which force the brake pads onto the disc, holding it fast like this. Okay, and obviously the pads are made out of a special compound which allows them to um, endure a lot of heat and so on, and it will stop the bike. Now, on a bike uh, like the CB, you'll see it actually has dual discs in the front, one on each side, so it's got two calipers, one here, one here, okay. The pads, you can see there's some orange in there. That's, those are the actual brake pads. I'll show you a, a caliper that's taken off the bike later. This is a disc lock so that uh, you know people can't steal the bike. But yeah, these are ventilated discs as well on this. That one also has ventilated discs. Um, actually, that one is too. So, there we have disc brakes. What about the alternative, drum brakes? Well, easy to all right so now sorry what i was trying to say is this uh four-wheeler has a single disc on the back the caliper you can't see it's hidden underneath this um which is connected to the axle so it stops both rear wheels uh very cheap design anyway um it's a cheap rubbish bike let's take a look at the front the front has drum brakes now the wheels are missing but i'll show you one of the wheels in a minute this is a drum brake and of course you can see there's another one over there now what happens is you can see this is not hydraulic it's mechanical now when you pull the brake when you pull the brake it pulls this mechanical lever here and what happens is let's take a look it actually expands the shoes okay in other words these these things here these two things are called brake shoes they will go outwards like this and they will then catch on the outer drum which covers them causing it to stop now this is a much cheaper design because as you can see less moving parts um, mechanical not hydraulic all right and uh, these are the things you need to replace but drum brakes are not as efficient as disc brakes and also well they don't break as well they overheat more blah 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 now i suppose i better show you a little bit more in depth let me go get some bit all right take a look here here's the wheel of the quad one of them Okay, see, just a big wheel. Um, and here is where those shoes would sit inside. This is the drum, okay? It's actually got a ceramic coating to help the heat um, dissipate. Anyway, as you can see, as it expands out, it catches on here. 
stopping the wheel from turning. Okay, so that's a drum brake and how it works. Most uh, older cars and in fact any kind of lower range cars have got drums on the back, discs on the front. I'll go show you later. Here we have one of the rubbish front calipers that I replaced on my CB. Now these are the cylinders here. They're very difficult to push in. Usually you need to use a screwdriver or something. But basically, here's the idea. You've got brake pads. Let me try and find some. I know I have some, some rubbish brake pads lying around. Just give me a second. All right, I'm sorry, I can't find those brake pads. You'll just have to take my word for it. I'll show you what brake pads look like anyway. This is a, these are actually new rear brake pads for my CB. The, the front ones are bigger since actually more braking is done with the front than with the rear in general on bikes. Um, as you can see, it's just made out of a special compound. Um, let's see. The idea is that, okay, these are not the right size, but I'll try and show you. You have one fits in this side, okay. You have one that fits in the other side, of course, like this. And they will go on either side of the disc. Then what happens is, okay, got this carrier thing here, which actually holds it and enables it, everything to move, okay. Otherwise, the whole caliper wouldn't be able to move. It's, it really has to move. Let me take that out, in fact. Okay. Now, it's very, very straightforward. Here is where your hydraulic fluid, your dot four, is what you should use anyway. Brake fluid goes into the caliper right over here with your hydraulic cable. What it does is when you pull the, the lever, it forces the hydraulic fluid to push out these two pistons, Okay, which in turn pushes this brake pad up against the disc and of course at the same time because there's a disc on the other side it basically causes the two to come together and clamp down on the disc um, that's how it works it's actually very simple however a lot can go wrong with uh, disc brakes old ones especially um, because seals there are lots of seals and so on inside here can break and air bubbles can get into the system and that's what you don't want so you don't want air bubbles and you don't want any dirt or anything like that getting inside your brake system. Okay, that is uh, what I'm going to be showing you guys in the future is how to actually bleed brakes is what we call it to get the um, get the air bub bubbles out. Sorry, I forgot to show you the master cylinder for the rear here on the CB. You can see there it is. That's basically just a reservoir where your um, your brake fluid stays. When you push the brake, which is down here, here is your little pump. It pumps the brake fluid all the way to the caliper. Now perhaps I can show you the brake in action. If I um, see if I can get the right angle here. Um, you should be able to at least see the caliper. Okay, I'm going to squeeze now. No, it's not really. You can see the caliper moving slightly, but of course, it's such a small adjustment that you won't really be able to see it properly on camera. I will, however, show you very properly when I strip it all down because on the CB, I'm going to be taking the rear caliper off to repaint it and also to just refurb it, you know, uh, clean it out. Um, I'm going to bleed it as well, which involves, which involves, uh, you can see this little nipple over here loosening this, attaching a, uh, a hose to it. Um, you, you actually need help when it comes to bleeding brakes. It's not something you can really do yourself. You need two people to do it. Um, and letting out fluid, tightening it, letting it out, etc. You need someone pumping the front. Um, and that is in order to get rid of any air bubbles. But anyway, this caliper I'm going to be taking off. I'll be replacing the pads. I'll be um, painting it a different color, etc. And I'm going to redo the front calipers as well because I'm not happy with the paint job. So I'm going to be fixing that up too. And that includes cleaning the, the reservoir, putting in new brake fluid, etc, etc. So I'm going to do quite a thorough job on that and I'd like to show you all about it. Um, oh yeah. Here you can see a drum brake on this electrical bike and you can also see there's a drum brake Mm, you can see inside there the fins. Let's uh, take a look. Here you can see the drum brake. It's got fins on it. This is in order to cool it down, dissipate the heat a bit. Okay. But like this old scooter has drum brakes on the front and on the back. 
as you can see over there. And uh, let me go and find some cars quickly, give you, give you an idea about drum brakes. All right, let's take a look at some cars around here. As you can see, most modern cars have got disc brakes in the rear. See there, has a disc. Um, and the front as well. Most cars have front brakes or disc brakes. In fact, all cars, unless you've got an old 60s muscle car or something. Um, okay, see this Ford, whatever it is, Focus or something. Uh, doesn't say, anyway, Fiesta, I think. It's got drum brakes on the rear, you see the drums? No caliper. And uh, the front has disc brakes, which is fine, especially for a cheaper car, because, um, you know, 70% of your braking in a car is done on the front. Same here, discs front and rear. Yeah, so basically any uh, modern car um, that's not bottom of the range will probably have four-wheel disc brakes. I actually had a car that had four-wheel drum brakes before, it was awful. It's an old 1966 GTO, way back in the day. Um, and yeah, it wasn't the safest thing to drive. <laughs> anyway, um, I hope that answers your questions on drum brakes and disc brakes. Next in the series of uh, brake videos, like I said, I'm actually going to take some calipers off, change pads and uh, bleed brakes. So stick around.